In this short video, I'll be showing you a neat trick to create consistent characters inside Midjourney, including how using Midjourney versions 4 and 5 differ slightly, so be sure not to skip in case you miss something important. These characters can be used with any prompt, any environment and any scenes, and would be ideal for those who require a consistent character for a comic book or a video game. So the first thing we're going to do is generate a character we want to use consistently. So for this, I'm going to say imagine a very pretty woman, red curly hair, wearing a dress. And I'll be adding the version 5 and the 16-9 aspect ratio tags, which is just personal preference. You can use any tags you like, depending on what you're trying to achieve. The generations are complete. All of these look great, but I'm thinking that the second generation is the one I'd like to use for this project. If you haven't been as lucky first time and there aren't any images you like, you can click on the blue icon under the generations to re-roll the prompt and try again. But for me, I'll be using the second generation. But for now, I'm going to upscale the image I want by clicking on the Upscale 2 button. One of the reasons I went for this one was because it was as close to the prompt that I wanted and the face is looking straight ahead and is clear of any hair or other artefacts that could affect other generations we try to do using this as a base. OK, so the next thing we need is to get the image seed of this generation. This is where Midjourney 4 and 5 differ. I'll show you the difference and how to get the seeds, depending on what version you're using. If you have generated an image using Midjourney version 4, you will need to first upscale the generation you wish to use. For this video, I already produced some robot images to save time and use as an example. Once the upscaled image is produced, you want to go over to these three dots and click the envelope icon. If you do not see the icon, you can click on Add Reaction and search for the envelope and click it there. Once clicked, the icon will appear as mine does by clicking the dots for when you want to use it again in the future. Once you have clicked the icon, that will tell the Midjourney bot to send you information on that image for example, the job ID and the seed. We will need the seed for later, so be sure to keep it handy. If, however, you generated an image on Midjourney version 5 by adding the V5 tag, you will need to use the envelope reaction on the grid of four images, not on the upscaled version, as that doesn't work for V5. As you can see, once the envelope is clicked, Midjourney sent me a message with the seed information that we will need. OK, so now we have our image. What we need is to write a formula to tell Midjourney to use this character in new prompts. First write Imagine, then hit Space. Open the generation you want to use, then click Open in Browser. Copy the URL and paste it into your prompt, then copy and paste the original prompt. In our case, it was a very pretty woman, red curly hair, wearing a dress. Once you have done that, you want to write two dashes then the word seed, followed by the seed number that Midjourney gave us when we reacted to the generation using the envelope icon from earlier. Now we just need to hit enter and see what Midjourney produces for us. You will see your original generation pop up when you do this. Don't worry, that is perfectly normal and just how Midjourney handles the URL we copy and pasted before. OK, so we have our first round of generations and already it has created a consistent character in slightly different poses. But of course, we use the same prompt as our original, so they are quite similar. Let's change the prompt and see what happens. Do the same as before by copying and pasting the URL into your Imagine prompt. Except for this time, you can copy and paste the new prompt, which already has the seed number included, which is very handy. So now I'm going to add walking through New York City to the prompt. I'm also going to add the 169 aspect ratio and V5 tags to the prompt just for my personal preference. We now have the same character, but this time she's in New York City as we requested. You can see how handy this would be for creating consistent comic books or video game characters that need to be the same throughout the story. Now let's see if we can get this character to do something different rather than just changing her location. How about sitting on a park bench? I'll also add full body, although I found this to be a little hit and miss at times. It added the park bench, but as expected, the full body tag didn't really work. But with a few re-rolls or different prompt structure, this could be fixed quite easily. I'm going to see how well it does at changing her clothing. Let's see if it can put her into a police uniform 
while standing in front of a police station. I'm also going to see if it can change the style altogether by making her look more cartoonish. I think that is a pretty cool change. I definitely see the police uniform and the new cartoon style. But once again, more details could be added with a more advanced prompt. But for a basic prompt, this has come out looking really good. For my last test, I'm going to remove cartoon style and try adding the Octane render and Unreal Engine tags to give a more cleaner 3D game engine look to the character. Once again, they have come out looking pretty consistent in what I was looking for. Try it for yourself and see what you come up with. I want to thank everyone who has been watching my videos. I've almost hit the 600 subscribers mark, which for me is a huge achievement, so thank you all for the support you have been giving me. It's truly humbling and I appreciate it very much. Until next time, all the best and I'll see you in the next video.